Hello and welcome to Experience Data Talk, a time when we get together each week to talk about big data and analytics. At Experian, we believe that big data is good, good for our economy, good for consumers, and good for society. Today, we're talking about the Chief Data Officer and how this new role is transforming the C-suite. And we're excited to have Erin Hazelcorn here to share her insights with us. Erin is an analyst and a public relations manager at Experian Data Quality. Erin leverages her understanding of data quality to help organizations better understand data management strategies and how to create actionable insights. You can learn more about her work for Experian by going to edq.com and by following her on Twitter at Erin Hazelcorn. Erin, I'm super excited to have you on Data Talk. How are you doing? Great, Mike. How are you? Doing great. Uh, awesome to finally have you on Data Talk. I know you've just finished this awesome new study about CIOs, and I've just been doing tons of research. Can you talk a little bit about the new research you're doing? Yeah, so the report is titled, titled the, the Chief Data Officer Bridging the Gap Between Data and Decision Making. And we've heard from customers for a while that the CIO has really been affected by changes that we're seeing in data usage. Um, and we wanted to find out how they were being affected and what's what the changes are for these businesses. And we'd heard a lot about this growing role of the chief data officer and wanted to find out the purpose of that role and really how prevalent it was uh, within businesses. So we interviewed uh, 261 CIOs within non-governmental organizations. Wow. You can see these uh, a bit, you know, there were manufacturing, retail, financial services, et cetera. And all the companies were larger in size. They had over 500 employees. Um, and we also did to complement that, that quantitative study, we interviewed uh, six CDOs as well within businesses, um, really to kind of round out and get their opinions and thoughts on how their role is changing businesses and their usage of data. Aaron, how has data usage evolved over the past several years? Uh, it's changed pretty dramatically. So data usage used to be something that was more for just basic operations, like fulfillment or sending marketing communications. Um, it might be used to distribute product to brick and mortar locations. Um, but now data has really evolved to become a critical part of almost every business strategy. Um, this is partly due to the evolution of, of digital channels, you know, looking at mobile and websites and, and you know, how we're interacting with consumers. Um, but more importantly, the consumer today demands a far more personalized experience. And everyone from marketing to IT and anyone within a business uh, is really starting to feel that. Mm. Uh, the, they want a company to wow them. Um, and companies want to make better decisions um, that are going to enable this more personalized customer experience. But they also want to um, make the right products, so on and so forth. So today, data is really seen as an asset um, that's integral to, to marketing, marketing success and, and any kind of business success in the U.S. And that's part of the reason why we hear terms like big data, analytics. Um, they're thrown around far more in non-technical circles than ever before. It's not just IT talking about this anymore. Well, Aaron, as data is getting bigger and companies are learning to manage this better and be smart about the data, how are companies keeping up with all these changes? Well, they're, they're trying to keep up, but there's definitely some growing pains going on that we're seeing from the, from the data. Um, while most of the respondents believe that data is changing the way they do business, 83% um, think data is, is a valuable asset in their organization, and it's not being fully exploited. Um, in addition, 80% believe uh, they're in their organization's ability um, to exploit data and drive the business forward could be improved. So there's definitely gaps there that they're seeing. It's it's not all the way there. Um, companies are also spending money storing data that they can't even use mm. um, as the volumes increase, and they're only going to get better, bigger. Um, so a lot of this is because you know the accessibility of data. There's a lack of trust. Uh, businesses can't access the information that they want to, when they want to. Information is not fit for purpose for given departments. Um, so they really can't manipulate data appropriately to get what they want to out of it. Um, and 
And CDOs agree that data is not typically being leveraged today as a strategic asset, um, but it is something that they say they're laser, laser focused on. Um, they're always looking to generate more revenue and to provide a greater ROI by using data as an asset. And once organizations are really able to stop seeing data as kind of a risk or an obstacle or something they have to overcome, and they start looking at it as a competitive advantage, um, then it's really going to have a big impact on their business. But it's going to take that mind shift and also a data strategy to be put in place and, and resources around it to really let businesses keep up with these changes and leverage their data the way they want to. Aaron, in your interviews, what were you finding as some of the common barriers um, to using data that companies run into? So they're really divided into to two key areas that we see. Um, one is practical and one is organizational. Um, we'll, we'll touch high level on the practical ones, but um, you know these are some areas that, that aren't going away anytime soon and you know are things that businesses can um, overcome when they start to look at different forms of technology. You know, quite frankly, organization uh, challenges are the bigger ones to overcome, but let's look at the practical ones first. Um, a lot of businesses are having trouble with the volume of data, which isn't a surprise. Um, access to data, variety of data. We're looking at structured and unstructured data. How do we take advantage of mobile information, social media channels, um, and, and the comments that are on there? There's a lot of different types of data. It's not just structured you know, customer contact information anymore. Um, and there's also a lack of understanding of the financial A lot of businesses don't realize that if they've got issues in the quality of their data, that it is affecting their bottom line. So these are issues um, that I really don't expect to go away anytime soon, um, especially the volume issue. About half of the people that we surveyed believe that the volume of data in their organization um, in the next 12 to 18 months is going to increase, and they actually expect data volume stretch of 33%, so really high uh, expectations into how much data is going to grow. Um, but then there are these organizational issues, which again I mentioned were the bigger challenge. Um, these are looking at company culture around data, um, which is which is hard to change. You can't just put a piece of, of software on top of co company culture. It's something that you have to really work on. Um, and you know it's it's contradicting a lot of the technical um, data management challenges. So the majority of CIOs have, that we surveyed face barriers around company culture. 68% uh, said they were struggling to find stakeholders who took anything other than a siloed view of data management. So these are stakeholders maybe in marketing that mm. say, you know, all I care about is my marketing data. Or folks in fulfillment that say, the only thing I care about is getting packages from point A to point B you know, I don't really care about anything else that doesn't help me with that. And while that's the extent and you want the department to be able to have data that fits for their given purpose, data management is something that's, that affects everyone uh, and it's something they all need to work on together and realize this is a central resource to the company. Um, so organizations that we found without a CDO um, have an ambition to capitalize on data, but CIOs struggle to implement data-driven decision-making strategies because no one seems to own the process. 70% of the data within their business, which is a real challenge. Aaron, we keep you know reading in the news about more and more companies hiring chief data officers, especially in really highly you know regulated industries like financial services and healthcare. How, how common are you finding that role? Um, it's becoming more common. Uh, I think we're seeing, you know, right now probably around 40% or so of businesses, um, and that's a rough estimate, have a, a CEO of some sort or someone fulfilling that role, but it's new. Um, something we saw from the CIOs that we talked to is most companies that have a CDO type role in place that role was created in the last six months. Wow. So really on the cusp of that uh, starting to become a lot more common, um, it's grown exponentially in the past year. Um, and given the, the rising demands for customer-driven experiences, changing data volumes, data requirements, it's not surprising at all to see this rise. And also something we noticed is that organizations without a chief data officer that we talked to 
63% of them would like to see the CDO role created in the future. So wow. it's definitely something that I think is going to continue to grow and become more common. Um, you know, something interesting among those organizations without a CDO, there's clearly a pressing need for one. The top challenges for those who wanted a CDO were looking at a more consistent approach uh, to data-driven projects that mitigated risk. Um, they're also looking to uh, you know, reduce costs associated with poor data quality. There's a, there's a big increase going on there. Probably, quite frankly, what I suspect more is that people are finally noticing that there's a cost there. There's always been a problem there. Mm. Um, but 92% of the people that we talked to said they'd experienced problems as a result of inaccurate months. Um, that was affecting their strategic decision making, um, their assessment of regulatory risk, and also their customer experience. So really key areas there in terms of, of data quality. Um, the other reason for wanting a CDO um, is in handling increased regulation and, and governance. Again, that's why we're seeing the CDO pretty commonly in a lot of the regulated industries right now. The CDO, first and foremost, a lot of times is going in and cleaning up data governance, um, especially around compliance. And then they're looking a bit more onto the analytical side of things and business decision making. But that governance piece is kind of first and foremost, which is why you can see those, those areas for wanting a CDO. Um, but I think it's important to note that implementing a CDO role is not a silver bullet mm -hmm. to solve it an organization, you know, anything around, um, but changing the culture is probably one of the greatest obstacles that a CDO is going to face. Um, many of those that we interviewed directly um, said they felt the cultural change was oftentimes the most difficult, but it was the most important piece of their role. Um, they often said that uh, when it talked about integrating data into corporate culture, um, they didn't want to force processes and they didn't want to hinder employees from their daily routine. Um, we heard the term one CDO told me they didn't want to be the data police. Mm. Um, they explained that employees will do anything to find shortcuts um, around processes at all costs. And forcing people to do governance for governance sake um, isn't a compelling enough reason to get them to comply with rules and standards around data. Uh, the CDO really needed to be an evangelist. They had to find a way to integrate what they were trying to do around data into the day-to-day -day routine of employees and evangelize proper data management and really explain why it was better for the employee. And they said really that was the CDO's number one job mm -hmm. um, to be that kind of trusted advisor within the business. So Aaron, how does the CDO work you know, with the CIO? How, how are they different? Um, so you know, nearly three quarters of the CIOs that we talked to um, said that the CDO was, again, that trusted advisor across mm -hmm. the enterprise. Um, they were also considered to be a, a guardian of data quality. Um, you know, CDOs are, are also responsible for driving large scale data management programs that involve multiple stakeholders. They're going to have to reach out across the entire business. And that was according to 59% of respondents. You still see for the CIO that they're going to maintain a lot of technical control. They're going to look at improving the bottom line, um, providing platforms and technologies to support analytics across the enterprise. Um, and they are really focused on how do I find technology solutions um, that are going to help the business um, better use information. But for the CDO, um, you know, a lot of times they come with an organization, they're going to be looking at how do they build trust around data? How do they change the company culture? How can they evangelize data across the business and look at it more of a, a consultative role? Um, you know, the chief data office team, because they're not alone, um, includes both technical and business-minded people that can support data quality initiatives and activities. Um, it's about elevating data management on the corporate agenda. So you're going to see them work pretty heavily with folks like data stewards, data consumers, data analysts. Um, and actually, if you look at the report, you're going to see some of the definitions of, of these folks and a few more that are on the
and the VC often has to take a very consultative approach across the business um, and look at the positive effects of centralizing a data strategy. So outreach and education across the business is really critical to this role, um, especially when people are often, you know, not always open to change. Um, so by leveraging data scientists, data stewards, um, and optimizing the data infrastructure, CDOs are beginning to move up and help their company become more data sophisticated and moving up what we call a data sophistication curve. So optimizing their data strategy, making sure that they're using it to the best of their ability. Um, and, and for instance, another area that, that I thought was interesting when we look at the, the CDO study is that 61% of those with a CDO think the volume of data that they'll need to manage will, will increase. Mm. What was interesting is just 53% of those without a, a CDO had the same belief. So companies with a CDO are quite frankly better prepared to face future obstacles around data. They're preparing for that. Um, and they'll know that they'll need to overcome that challenge. So it really is all about having the right partners and data practices um, to put them on a path for success for better leveraging data. Aaron, after doing all this extensive research, how common do you think it is for organizations to start adopting and bringing in CDOs? I think again, as I said before, I think it's going to become more more common. I am um, something I saw recently from uh, Gartner is that they actually predict fifty percent of all companies in regulated industries are going to have a CDO by twenty seventeen. Um, I think that number is is accurate, but could actually be. Um, I think you go a little more aggressive. I think you could say that more companies than that are going to have, um, you know, a, a CDO by that time, by 2017. Um, and I think it's really going to accelerate in, in the coming years, especially as companies try to maximize the, the usage of their data resources. Thanks, Aaron. Any, any final takeaways you'd like to share with everyone? Yeah, I think, you know, I will say that the data wasn't overly surprising given my line of, of work, but it showed how important you know, data is to businesses and how it's transforming roles, even at the C-level. Um, and so CDOs are really showing and how important it is to take advantage of data resources. Um, so I think it's really going to be an incredible role to watch. I think it's really going to be important when we look at driving additional analytics um, and insight from, from data and not just storing and wasting all this resource on managing it and securing it, but actually getting business value out of it um, is going to be really important. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for giving us a snapshot of this new report. Can you let everyone know where they can go to see all the charts, all the graphs, all the work that you've done um, on, on CDOs? Yeah. Absolutely. So you can download the report. It is about 12 pages, but there's lots of pretty graphs in there. Um, you can get it on edq.com. There's also a short URL on the screen, ex.pn slash CDO paper. Um, and you can go there to get a copy of the, the report and uh, be sure to let us know what you think. Well, Aaron, thank you so much. Uh, before we go, can you let everyone know a little bit more about yourself and your work? Yeah, so I've, I've been doing research for Experian for about seven years now. You can find a number of reports that I've done in the past on uh, edq.com. I also frequently blog on that site as well, so you can check out any of my blog posts there. Um, and feel free, again, to follow me on Twitter um, at Aaron Hazelcorn. Aaron, thank you so much for being our guest in Data Talk today. I want to let everyone know if you'd like to see more of this research and download a free copy of this report, you can get it for free. Um, like Aaron said, you can go to edq.com, or you can go to this short URL, which is ex.pn slash CDO paper.